So one question I've been asked a few times is, how does ejecting work in Star Wars? For example, in A New Hope, before his untimely death, Porkins is told to pull up and eject. However, I'm sure you've noticed that unlike their Imperial counterparts, Rebel pilots don't have full head coverings. Their face is fully exposed because, let's be honest, everyone wants to see the face of the main character as he's firing his proton torpedo. But how then could an ejecting X-Wing pilot survive in space? And I mean, that applies really to any ship. Space is not a friendly place if you're a living being. Obviously, there's the lack of oxygen if you need that to survive like humans do, but there's also radiation, there's cold, there's depressurization, all things that you don't want to experience, especially at the tail end of a space battle. So what happens? And there are a couple of options. Perhaps the entire cockpit ejects from the fuselage, and this is definitely something that some ships could do. However, I've seen no evidence that this is within the capabilities of an X-Wing, and although this, of course, could be changed in the future, there's actually lore from the Star Wars Expanded Universe that states otherwise. Unsurprisingly, the Rogue Squadron series deals with ejecting pilots more than anything else. And in those books, an X-Wing is treated essentially like a modern-day aircraft. Pilots are ejected along with their seat. In fact, the seat is, at all times, even during normal flight, just called the ejection seat. When a pilot takes damage, they hit the ejection button, the canopy on the X-Wing blows off, and the seat is ejected into space. At least that's how it's supposed to go. Wraith Squadron gives us one example where the canopy doesn't blow, and a pilot suffers a pretty unfortunate death when they're ejected straight up into the top of their fighter and subsequently killed. That same book actually gives us the best description of how ejections work. And before researching this video, this is how I thought it worked, but I wasn't sure if it was kind of just a fan explanation or whether it was actually laid out. But the book explicitly says when a pilot is ejected, a small personal mag shield is activated by a pressure sensor in the user's suit. You know how Star Wars hangars appear to be open to space, but actually have that force field that keeps air in? Well, that's basically what's happening here. Unfortunately, we don't get a whole lot of other details. Is the actual projector for the mag shield within the suit, or is it something attached to the chair? Obviously, X-Wing pilots do have that thing usually on their chest. That's usually called a life support unit, so I'm guessing maybe Maybe that projects the shield, then also populates it with air and warmth. Obviously, however, that's only a temporary measure, and you're probably not going to survive in vacuum for very long. But that also does explain why pilots have these life support units, but have a completely exposed face. Now, I guess if you really wanted to be safe, you'd probably do what the Imperials do, and put pilots in a full pressurized flight suit just to be extra safe, but I'm guessing that pilots die more often if they have to eject anyway that it's just not worth it. On that note, let's actually talk about the process of ejection and what happens afterwards. Despite what I just said, good guy pilots ejecting in Star Wars is extremely common in, say, for example, the Rogue Squadron novels. Basically, when a ship is destroyed, some other vessel will scan for life forms, i.e. the ejected pilot, they're noted, and if the battle is won, they'll be picked up by usually a capital ship, sometimes a small transport. Again, this is pretty common, especially for the named good guy characters in Rogue Squadron, but you also see a lot die, so it never gets too kind of boring. There also have been main character ejections. The most famous one would probably be Mara Jade in Dark Force Rising, book two of the Thrawn trilogy. In that novel, which was written by Timothy Zahn before the X-Wing series, we get pretty much the same description of how ejecting works. The canopy blows off, Mara is sent out in her Z-95's ejection chair, but in that case, she gets brushed by an ion beam and the following happens. In that single crackle of tortured electronics, she had lost everything. Her calm, her lights, her limited maneuvering jets, her life support regulator, her emergency beacons. So it almost sounds like, for the Z-95 at least, that there is some form of life support built into the chair itself. In Balance Point, Jaina Solo is forced to eject in a battle against the Yuzhan Vong. She goes EV, the book says, and I quote, her pressure suit held, but she was close to an attack cruiser, one of ours. When the drive blew, she got a massive mag field exposure. She isn't permanently injured, she does suffer some damage to her legs, and her eyesight actually goes for a while. Not fully blind, but not good enough to fight. So yeah, that's the risk of going EV. 
all in all, I guess the purpose of this video is sort of to explain that the general principles of ejecting seem largely agreed upon. You eject through a seat, into space, something keeps you alive, whether it's your pressure suit, your chair, whatever. And I mean, that's kind of the consequence of wanting to have jet fighter style combat in space. All in all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.